Um, so tell me what, um, tell me about just your upbringing. Yeah, I heard you got uh, saved at a Christian camp. I did. I was, uh, I was adopted and I was, uh, I had two loving parents. I was raised in uh, Southgate, California. I went to Bible Baptist Church for many years and, and I was the rebel. I was always a rebel. Got caught in church with pot and uh, different things, you know. And I went to church camp uh, back when I was 16. And uh, that's where I was saved. And uh, me, like a lot of people, they think when you're saved, then you can go do what you want. You know, you're saved and God's going to forgive you. And, you know, and, but I found out that's not true because I went the next, I don't know how many years doing what I wanted to do and not what God wanted me to do. And uh, I started uh, at 13. Actually, we should probably back up to when I was molested at 13. Uh, and that kind of put me on a downhill spiral. Ever since uh, the molestation took place, I was a newspaper boy knocking on the door. I'm uh, collecting for the, uh, for the Southgate Press. And uh, this big jolly guy answers the door, flips open the door. It's just a minute. I'm going to get my wallet. I said, okay. And I'm looking around. I see all this beer kegs and all this, you know, fun stuff. And, uh, you know, a 13-year-old kid, uh, their hormones are raging, you know. So I said, he goes, do you want a beer? I said, sure. So I went in. And uh, I had a couple of beers. I was getting half drunk and uh, didn't take much for me to get drunk. <laughs> anyway, uh, he says, have you ever seen uh, uh, X-rated movies? And I said, I said, no. I says, uh, he said, would you like to? I said, well, actually, I don't know, but I got to pee real bad, you know. And uh, so I went in. There was no door on the bathroom. And uh, so I went in there with pee. And here he is watching me. And I'm, I should have seen the red flag come up, but I didn't. And uh, so he's running these movies, you know, after I got done. And, uh, we're laying on the bed and everything. And uh, he, uh, he, he reaches over and he, you know, unzips the pants. And, uh, and the rest was history, you know. I let him do it. And uh, I thought it was cool. And I kept going back, you know. And uh, I thought this was okay. It took 40-some years later to find out it wasn't okay, that I was molested when I was writing my book. And... Uh, I thought, oh my goodness, and because uh, all these years, uh, it was crazy, you know. Was and, that the first time you saw porn? On a movie, yeah. Back then, it was so so many years ago. This was back in uh, uh, the '60s, and they had these little reels, you know, like little tapes, like a tape movie, you know. And uh, I thought it was the best thing ever, you know. I didn't really realize that this is a man molesting me. I just thought it was sex, you know, and. Uh, here we go, you know. So basically, I started sex when I was 11, and I was caught in a motel room before uh, with a girl. And uh, yeah, my dad knocked on the door, and uh, <laughs> he uh, says, "David, are you in there?" And I didn't want to answer, but I said, "Yeah." And I I had to face the music, so to speak, and uh, we got severely punished. And again, this is all in the book, you know, and. Uh, so you get saved at 16, go on to, actually, when did you get Well, married? when I was 16, I, like I said, I got saved at 16. I got married at 17, started out, my first wife, still in high school. And uh, this is a whole other story. Uh, I didn't want to go to Vietnam. So I had to come up with some kind of a plan to, to get to get out of Vietnam. And uh, so they said, uh, if you have kids and married, you don't go. And uh, so I said, okay, well, I'll figure out a way to get married and have a couple kids. And that's exactly what I did. You know, by the time I was at 17, by the time I was 19, I had two kids. The draft went off and here I am stuck with a woman I didn't love, two kids I didn't want. I'm stuck like this, right? That marriage lasted about five years. And then three weeks after I was married to the first wife, I was out fooling around with my, my girlfriend on the side, which was before the wife, you know. But you got to remember, I'm 17, 18 years old. Raging hormones and uh, not going to church, not doing any of the right stuff, you know, running, running from everything, you know. So, so how many how many times have you been married? Five times. Five. I've been married, uh, let's see, the last one was with number, wife number five is kind of funny. I was married 41 days, six hours and 11 minutes. And uh, she was a nut. <laughs> but the sex was great. You know, and, and, and I, I, I came out of a hotel casino and I, was, I didn't come out, but I was going in and here was this drunk girl and she was oh bubbly. And she came up to me and she says, 
oh, aren't you the guy from Judas Priest? I said, oh, yeah, you know, like that, thinking, well, there we'll get this one bagged up. And sure enough, within an hour, I'm back at my condo and we're having sex, you know. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, my whole life was geared on sex. Have you ever been faithful to any of your wives? No. No. I was like, uh, it, it was horrible. I mean, I used to be a cab driver here as well back in the 70s, 80s. And uh, I used to pick up the hookers and uh, we'd get blowjobs on the way to the, to the, to the, uh, to the next, uh, you know, where they wanted to go instead of the fair, you know. And uh, they put Coke spoons up our nose and uh, we were high on drugs all the time. Back then they didn't drug test or anything. That was the best job anybody could ever dream of, driving a cab in Las Vegas, having hookers constantly and drugs and all this stuff. It's, it was the best time of my life, so I thought. And that lasted almost 10 years. So. so hookers, multiple wives, multiple affairs. Talk to me about porn usage. Uh, well, the porn usage was... was, was I, I was the type of person that had to have a different face for every time I pleasured myself. And uh, I was heavily into the masturbation for quite a while because I thought that was a safe way to do it. And uh, there's no disease involved and, you know, you can control everything and, 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 and all that. So um, I would probably say I probably had a couple hundred movies, you know, and, uh, I mean, but I would get wore out on the, on the girl on girl, guy on girl, threesomes, uh, I needed a new, a whole new thing, you know. So that's where I got into the uh, the shemale stuff, and uh, that was like so, a whole new so, adventure. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, because I I think for some people watching, going, okay, well, three some to this to shemale. So, so would you say, I mean, this progression of, of form, I mean, you uh -huh. you always wanted more, and you oh needed, yeah, oh you yeah, needed a new fix. I needed a new fix constantly. Yeah. And so it was never. Was it ever enough? It was never enough. Uh, that's why I always say I, I was just a, I was a slave to my penis, you know, to put it out there. I mean, whatever the penis wanted, I did, you know, and it was constantly. I'd wake up in the morning and, 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 and basically ask it what it wanted me to do for the day. How, how am I going to serve it, you know? And uh, so I try to figure things out. I, I, I did it in the cab. I did it while I was driving a cab. I mean, how can anybody do what I did? I mean, I was horrible. I mean, I, I concealed it. I didn't let anybody see it, but I'd have a couple of girls in the cab. I'd be looking in the in the mirror, you know, and doing this. And uh, I had to cover, you know, like a coat over me or something. They never saw what I was doing. They had no idea. But I was so slick at the whole thing that I did. Never got caught. All those years that I did what I did, never got caught once. So the fascination then with, the, or the interest with the shemale stuff? It was very interesting. Uh, you know, because they, 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 they look pretty. They have the, um, the face of a woman, you know, and then they have the breasts and everything. And, uh, but they have the penis down below. And, uh, but I was never gay. I never wanted to be with a man, you know. But maybe going back to that, uh, that being molested at 13 might have triggered something somewhere where I didn't want to be with a man. I didn't want to be with the shemale. But I got turned on looking at him, you know, because I was so bored with the with the other stuff, you know, I kept having to see new things and, you know, get it, get it up in my mind. So where do you just, you know, you want, where do you find that? Where do you pursue that? I mean, you know, in your world of you're, you're driving a cab, you're right. You know, you've been with women, but now, right. So you want that. Where do you go to find that? To find the women? Yeah. I mean, oh, I used to go to the strip bars. I went to the chicken ranch out here, the, uh, the Sherry's, pa uh, Sherry's Ranch. I mean, I went to all the cat houses in, the, in Nevada, you know, was, was paying the hundred bucks or whatever. Back then it was like 50 or a hundred, you know, nowadays it's a lot more, but, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, the money was coming in and, uh, through the cap company I made all, you know, tips and stuff like that. So, yeah. And so you're, so you're with now your first she -mail. And kind of well, I was never with the shemale. Okay. Never oh no, 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 no. Oh. It was just in, just in the movies and the magazines. Okay. I was never literally with a shemale. Okay. No, I, no, no. Okay, so you're just just masturbating with the with the, with the with the movies and the and the magazines with the shemales. Yeah. I never went any further than that. You know, I thought that was enough. I thought the, uh, you know, but I couldn't. I could never get enough. I mean, I went to the, these stores and I tried to buy as much stuff as I could, and then. 
eventually it all ran out. It was getting to be the same stuff, and they didn't really have any new stuff. And I'm looking for new stuff, and uh, I never really found any, you know. But I did in that tra that transformation magazine. That's where I found the article. It said uh, a glamour boutique, uh, get a makeover and be 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 one of those, you know, be a be a woman, you know. So that's kind of where it took me to. So would you ever? You read a magazine. It says be. Come a woman. Right, right. You like women. You've been, oh, I loved you've women. You've been with how many of them? Over a thousand. <laughs> so what gets you when you're sitting there reading this magazine going, I, I could do this? I could do it. You know, and to this day, I don't know. I mean, I, the truth is, I believe it was a God sent because I, every time I did what I did, pleasured myself, and every, not, maybe not every time, but most of the time I prayed, I said, God, I take this away from me. I, I can't, I can't keep doing this. You know, I'm sick. And uh, I kept praying and praying. And that's why, you know, it's all on God's time. I don't know. To this day, I, I believe in my own being that God says, this is enough's enough. And uh, I'm going to take the whole thing away from you. And this is how I'm going to do it. He works in mysterious ways. And I've told this story to pastors and stuff before. And they, they, they don't really believe it. Because it's, the, the story is so hard to believe anyway. But why would God do that? I don't know. I don't. But why would I do it? Here I am, uh, a perfect dude with 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 a, a, a perfect sex life. I didn't need any drugs, no Viagra, none of that stuff. I mean, uh, erections were, were were drop of the hat, you know. And uh, why would I want to become a woman? Why would I want to chop it off? That's what my uh, my fifth ex wife said when we had an interview with her one time. She says, "He has an eight inch penis. Why does he want to cut that off? Is he crazy?" You know, and uh, I didn't think nothing about it because I was led from that makeover and the cross dressing and going to the uh, going back to the uh, the boutique and hanging out with all the cross dressing friends and everything. I couldn't stop. I'm so compulsive. I am one of the most compulsive persons you probably ever meet. But once I get started on something, look at the tattoos. I got a, uh, my whole body is totally covered, 150 plus tattoos. I couldn't stop with that. But when my did you use your first tattoo. I was 17. I was 17. I had a Tweety Bird. It was right over here, but it's since been covered up. And uh, but uh, I started getting all the girly tattoos. I got Hello Kitties and the, all the makeup and the different things uh, uh, leading up to the surgery. Because I thought in my mind, I really thought I was going to be a woman. So walk me through that. You read this magazine. You go in for an appointment. Months later, I thought I was going to have sex at the appointment. I mean, that's how bad the sex was with me. Everywhere I went, I'm thinking I'm going to have some kind of sex. And I thought, oh, they're going to make me up. I'm going to be a pretty girl. And I'm going to have sex with the makeup person. I don't know. You know, it's just uh, it's it's crazy. And this process, I mean, it can't be cheap, right? <laughs> no, it was a, it was 150 bucks to get the makeover. You know, well, but I, I look like good. To, I'm talking about losing the penis. Oh, that was the uh, the whole thing from pulling the hair out of my beard all the way down to I got the boobs put in, which recently I had them taken out, of course. But uh, that's a whole other story. But down to the vaginoplasty and the and the whole thing, I spent over fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand. So, but I didn't care. I spent every penny I had. That's why I make a joke about it. instead of buying a sex uh, instead of buying a sports car, I bought a sex addict a, a, a sex operation. <laughs> So, you know, it's. Uh, so the, I should have bought the sports car. Is what I'm trying to say. The day you lost your your penis, do right? You think was there? I mean, you're you're becoming a, a woman, but was there a sense of it's finally like it's gone? Like I'm. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be free of this maybe addiction, or were you? No. That's what's so. That's what's so crazy about or it. I'm just gonna go in. I thought I was gonna be a woman doing the same thing. I didn't do it. I didn't do it because uh, what the Bible verse says: "Cut your hand off" and all that stuff. No, I didn't do that. I, I read that later on, but I didn't do it because it said that. So you I did. This I, might be greater sex. Now yes, as a woman. yes. I thought it was going to be greater sex as a lesbian. As a lesbian, at one time this tattoo said "100 hundred percent lesbian." Down here it said "lesbian," and then I thought, "Oh boy, I can't keep this anymore." So I went. I had to cross out the lesbian. Fluff it up and make it make it then we put love in here so I could I could say you know this is this is more more of a, a thing for God 100 percent love because that's what God is you know so I was able to switch it around and and, and do that 
So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I literally thought that I was going to be sexually, uh, as a woman, not with men, because I never wanted to be with a guy, but with women. Wow. And I, I thought I'd be a lesbian, okay? See, that's where the whole thing comes in. That's where it gets even more interesting. Because when I woke up from the operation, all this, I thought it, you know, and I'm here nine days and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I got these nice boobs and I'm, 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 oh, this is cool, you know. About a week later, maybe a week and a half later, so once everything's starting to heal up, you know, and everything, it's like, I try to, I try to take care of it with vibrators and I try to, you know, have a, 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 a climax and everything. As, as a woman, couldn't do it. Nothing. No sensation, no feeling, nothing. So that's why, that's why I think in my mind it was a godsend. And he said, all right, because I went to one of the best surgeons there was. Everyone else has feelings and all of them have sex and blah, blah, blah. I have nothing, okay? Uh, so I do, I do believe that God said, okay, I want to fix her. Um, she's going to have no feelings. She's going to have nothing down there. And everything was gone, for, erased from my memory bank for sex. So I'm probably one of the only people, one of the few, I'm not going to say only, they, they can actually live on this earth and not think one thing about sex ever again. No feelings, nothing. It's just like totally gone, just poof, you know. And I, I live every day like that now, and it's been almost five years since I had the operation. And is that, I mean, because... No. But I did try, I did try the, uh, I tried it out. It's like buying a new car and not driving it. I tried it out once, you know, to see what it was like. Nothing. You know, with a guy, and it's like it was, it was, it, it was, it made me almost nauseous, you know, to do it, and uh, and then the guy ejaculated, and now here I am, walking down the the hallway to go to the bathroom with the stuff running down my leg, like I used to do to the women that I banged up and have fun with. So now you see kind of this full circle, but at the time, I mean, how pissed are you that? And I got rid of my penis. Right. And now I don't have no feeling. Right. I oh, oh, I was pissed. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, why did I do this? What was, what was put into my mind and my brain to, to take a perfectly good dude and, 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 and make a, guy, a girl out of him, you know? When the guy was happy doing what he was doing. You see, that's where, that's where it kind of, it's a catch-22, so to speak. Because I was happy with what I was doing. I didn't want to give it up. But I would have wound up in jail somewhere. You I don't think, want. You think had you not? Um, well, I was never a pedophile. I never wanted kids. I was never any of that stuff. So, you know. You think you would have wound up in trouble at some? point? I know I would have. Like, I guarantee it. Cruising these streets, uh, uh, looking for prostitutes at two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I mean, I, I did that a lot. I'd wake up at, like I said, at midnight, one o'clock. I said, oh, I don't want to do the movie thing anymore. I'm tired. I'll just go look for a, a, a hooker, you know. And I did that many, many times, you know. Because living in Vegas for 32 years, I mean, there's hookers everywhere, you know, so they're easy to get. Everywhere you look, you're going to find one, you know, some $20, some $50, some $1,000. I'd always get the $20 ones, cause, you know, so, but just to get hand jobs in the car, that would suffice me, you know. You pick up a girl on the street, it's a $20 bill, she gives you a hand job in a, in a parking lot over here, and you're on your way, and you felt good. Oh, chalk up another one, that's part of the thousand, you know, but I just... What do you think you spent over the years on sex? Or on Oh sex? my goodness. Uh, pfft, I'd probably say uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars on everything with, with, with all the sex and all the, the, the magazines, movies, uh, everything you can imagine, probably. Yeah, at least. Because we're talking 42 years, you know. So, yeah. So, what, what do your kids think? Well, my daughter, uh, she, she's actually, her and her husband are both preachers in uh, Kansas. And uh, they, they pastor a, a four-square Pentecostal church. And uh, that's another story in itself. That's why I have a 200-page book, because uh, they, they robbed the grandmother and myself of uh, $40,000 in, in the will. And they double-dipped. And uh, so we didn't really speak a whole lot, uh, too much. Uh, you know, I still, still wrote her. It said happy birthday or something. Love, Dad. I always put Dad. I didn't put who I, I am, Diamond D or anything. And uh, but, uh, my son, he lives here in town, and uh, we talk maybe once a year on the computer, Facebook. That's about it. You know, they 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 they, they don't want to have nothing to do with me. And that's another thing that uh, 
we, we, we had the conversation back when they stole the money and everything. And uh, I told him, I said, you go ahead and take the money. We are done. We're not speaking again. You know you're doing wrong. You're spitting on your dead grandmother's grave. What about me? I don't care about the money. I never really cared about money. It's the fact that how can they do that, you know? The kids, uh, they were 23, 24 at the time. So they're not, they wanted the money. So they took it. They said, the hell with you. And uh, they took the money. So I said, okay, that's fine. But I, I forgave them. The Bible says you got to forgive. You don't have to like what they did, but you got to love them. And uh, that's just like everybody else. My ministry now is to the transgender, gay, lesbian uh, community. It's one of the hardest ministries you'll ever have because they think they're right. They don't think they're doing wrong. They think it's all good. And, and, and I just have to show them the love of Jesus. You know, I can't tell them they're wrong because they're going to say there's the door. So tell me, you lived five years as a woman. Almost. Well, actually a little. I mean, I had the surgery November 20th. It'll be five years. I had it in 07. But I actually lived a, a part-time as a cross-dresser and all that. You're supposed to live a year to two years before you get the surgery. I had to go to the therapist and lie to him. You know, to the, uh, I had to figure out a way to, to, to get the hormones. I found a friend. She says, oh, so-and-so over here gives the hormones. Okay, so I get on the hormones. And then uh, I asked, oh, so-and-so over here is a lawyer. She can get your name changed. So I did that. And then uh, they said, we need two letters from psychiatrists before you can get the surgery, you know. And uh, it's called that Harry Benjamin uh, thing. And uh, anyway, I, I got one. I said, I got cash. How much is it going to cost me? And uh, she said, about 400 you know, so I, I said, that's fine. So I got the letter from her and I, she says, oh, now she sends me to this other psychiatrist. Uh, he was $250 for an hour. And I got the two letters. I race off to Arizona. And uh, uh, this was uh, um, uh, a week after my birthday. Okay, this was in August. And by, by uh, November, I had the surgery because I had cash and I lied to them. They thought I was uh, a great candidate for it. You know, everything was a lie. My whole life has been a lie, pre pretty much, you know. A lie, deceitful, uh, destroying uh, relationships. I called my fourth ex-wife on the phone I, from a hotel room. I said, we're getting a divorce. We're done after 11 years, you know, because I was going to go to Florida and get hooked up with uh, a bunch of chicks down there, you know, be a beach bum and uh, uh, have a big sex life and all this stuff. So, I mean, it's a sad story. It's uh, uh, how, how somebody can really get, get addicted to sex. And uh, this whole world is geared on sex. I don't care. It's uh, till you actually have no sex for, for for forever. You don't even know what it's all about. You know? So what happened two days ago? Two days ago, uh, as you look at me now, I'm back to being who God wanted me to be as a man, and it doesn't really matter what I got between my legs because uh, no one's going to see it anyway. And uh, I, I've been reading my Bible every day, and all I could hear was God saying, "Well, you really need to go back to being who I made you," and your story is great, but just don't do it as a girl because you're not a girl. And I know that. It just tears me up to think that 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 I did all this. And uh, I, I was a phony. I was a fraud. But I tried pulling it off. And, and, and people, people just called me ma'am and, and, and she and her. And, you know, I had my long hair. I didn't wear much makeup. As you can see, I got lip liner. I had the eyebrows tattooed, which now I got to live this way. But it's a great testimony. And uh, I just want to try to help someone else before they make the same mistake I did. And I do. I'm coaching a 25-year-old right now in the, in the Fusion Community Church. And uh, he, he, was, he was on the same path. And he was going to the strip clubs. And he was masturbating constantly. And and, and, and he tells me to this day, and I'm helping him out, that, that, that he's recovering, that he's, he's getting through it. And it's, it's probably one of the hardest things you can do as a 25-year-old guy with all this sex living in this town. That's why they call it Sin City. But it's all about the sex, the gambling, and the drugs. That's the three, three things that are, uh, that'll get you most here. When you hear that passage that says lust will never be satisfied, right? What does that? How? What does that mean to you? How, how well, I lusted for for most of my life. You know, whether you just look at a woman and 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 you and you lust after her without even touching yourself, you're lusting after her, thinking, oh, she'd be great in bed, or you're trying to you know picture her with no clothes on, or or something like that. That kind of lusting. 
It's, uh, I don't do none of that anymore. I was, I was, I was set free, you know, by the blood of Jesus. And, uh, I thank him every day, you know, because I, I don't know where I'd be today if I, if I didn't have the Lord, you know, and I have a, I have a friend that came over to my house, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he, he he said he's an atheist now. He used to ride with the with the group that I was. I was the president of the CMA here in town, and all, all those people uh, uh, they just told me to go get out. You know, they said, "Well, you can't be a part of us." They never ever tried to help me. They didn't give me scripture. They didn't set me down. They says, "Oh, let's pray for you, brother. Let, 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 let's find out what's going on." All they said was the pat answer. Oh, if that's what you're going to do, well, you know. Everybody I told I was getting a sex change and blah blah blah. They all said, "Oh, if that's what if that's what you think is right, then go ahead and do it." You know, if you, if you, if you feel good, feel good about it. You know, if that's what you want, go go do it. And um, how can that happen when you're supposed to be accountable for your brothers and sisters and help them out, according to what I read? And uh, they didn't do it. They did not do it. And to this day, they thought I was going to be a disgrace to them. That's why they didn't do anything. They just told me to, there's the door. I said, okay, you know. So you still introduce yourself as D, or do you think you'll ever go back to, to Dave? I can't go back to Dave uh, for the simple fact that he was a bum. He was, uh, he was probably the worst, worst person I ever knew for, for what he did. And to try to go back to being him would just destroy my mind, you know. It would destroy me. Because the, a name is just a name, you know. How many how many times you go in the back in the Old Testament and you see the you know names were changed? So changing the name is not bad. Uh, the Diamond D is a uh, is a um, unisex name, so you know. Plus I got it tattooed all over me, Diamond D. This one, Reverend Diamond D, and uh, uh, I was actually an ordained Reverend online. So you know, I, I always thought I had to have a title. You know, you don't need no title. What do you need a title for? But I always thought I needed to be important. And that's another reason, all the tattoos and the, the piercings. I thought, uh, oh, I'm going to be somebody someday. Uh, I want to be famous, you know. But now I do want to be famous, but I want to be famous for God. And I want to I take everybody down the path that needs help. Please listen to this because without the Lord, you'll have nothing. You'll have nothing. You know, he's the... He's the vine and we're the branches and uh, we can do nothing without him. And I'm a firm, firm believer in that. Last question. Um, somebody watching this online, surfing for porn or, you know, hiding a bunch of secrets on their computer and sure. from their spouse. Um, they just found this story right. online. And, um, and just maybe even just in front of the camera, what would you say to that person that, that, can't believe this right. would ever happen to them. You know, right. I think most people think, no, I'm, I'm not in that bad of shape. I, sure, I can, sure. I can fix myself. I, you know, what, what would you, well, what would you warn or caution them? I would tell them that God's the only one that can fix you. Um, I would tell them to, 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 to seek help, to seek counseling, to seek, uh, go to any church and ask the pastor for help. Um, that, that's what I would do if you're with, with your wife. She might even be able to help you. But the whole thing is why most people will not go to any of these things because it's all about the embarrassment. You are so embarrassed with what you've been doing that you can't tell anybody that. And that's what I kept a secret for all those years. I couldn't tell nobody. I was too embarrassed. How can I tell someone that I went on the middle of a road in Arizona, parked my car, got out there, masturbated, laying on the road looking at the stars? I mean, how can you tell people the dirty shame... Being a cab driver, masturbating with a coat over my lap while I'm hauling passengers. How can you tell people that? I'm telling them now because I, I have to tell the truth. The truth has to be told that, that, that how far this can go. So please get some kind of help somewhere because don't be ashamed. I, I know it's easy to say and, and people are doing it and they're, 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 they, they can't stop, you know. But you have to stop. You have to stop and, 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 and get help because... You're going to destroy your life. You're going to destroy the life of your, of your friends, your spouse, your, whoever it may be, because this is the worst thing that I think that, 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 that anybody could do is, is get involved in the, the sex uh, industry or business or, or whatever. It destroyed me. 
But praise God, uh, I'm set free now and I'm happy as can be. I am so happy, it's overjoyed, you know, because my life now is like over the top. I have nothing, but I have everything, if that makes sense. I have Jesus.